Tonight we're learning new details about how a recent move by the governor to halt the influx of undocumented immigrants to our state may be forcing children out. I-Team investigator Katie Legrone was first to break this story earlier this week, and tonight she discovers more children are being uprooted and forced out of the places they've temporarily called home here in Florida. In this Florida home, two bedrooms remain fully furnished. The sheets made, handmade pictures hang on the wall. But the children who these rooms were designed for are gone. So they had to move out right away? Right away. With no explanation on when or if any more children will ever return here. What was it like saying goodbye? Oh, it was hard. It was hard because, you know, you, I could say they get used to you. He's a foster parent who for the past seven years has cared for roughly 250 children who arrive in the state through the government's unaccompanied children's program, created to temporarily care for unaccompanied kids until they are united with a relative or sponsor. They are so humbled and so grateful. Yes, they are. Sorry. He's asked us not to reveal his identity because he's concerned the state's child welfare agency will punish him for speaking out. For months, he and his wife have been waiting for Florida's Department of Children and Families to renew their license to house unaccompanied kids. But the agency has yet to tell them anything. Their license lapsed in September, forcing them to suddenly say goodbye to the teenage brother and sister they'd been looking after for weeks. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I couldn't believe it. I came in and cried. <laughs> Earlier this week, we were first to reveal the state's sudden and unusual silent treatment to facilities supporting unaccompanied children here. About a week ago, this federally funded shelter in Sarasota also had to relocate nearly 60 unaccompanied children, half of them under 13 years old because the state wouldn't renew its license in time. We received no response. I've never experienced this before, so I don't really, I don't really understand. The center now getting the courts involved, asking a judge to make DCF determine one way or the other if they'll be relicensed. In a lengthy statement, the governor's spokesperson cited the Biden administration and its lack of transparency in sharing who, when, and where it's sending undocumented people to in Florida. The governor now pushing back, broadly directing state agencies to stop supporting federal efforts, including this directive to DCF to, by and large, not renew the licenses of anyone caring for unaccompanied children. People have a uh, misrepresentation of these kids, you know? A lot of people think, you know, these kids, you know, they're gang members, they got their, 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 their killers and, you know, they're, they're, they're um, rapists. No, it's not. It's everything the opposite. Back in this home, art remains the handmade reminders of the children who have come and are now gone. This foster dad and his wife hold on to pictures and videos of the children they've served. Fresa, fresa. These are kids you're dealing with, you know, and they, all these kids deserve a second chance. They deserve a chance in life. Praying politics doesn't stop the mission they believe they were meant for. When you dedicate yourself so much to these kids and you, you give all you have in, in your heart, it hurts. It really hurts. Despite our repeated requests to DCF about these licensing issues, they appear to be giving us the silent treatment as well, telling us they don't comment on pending litigation. Katie Legrone reporting. We have more information on this investigation and all of Katie's stories up on our website right now. That's abcactionnews.com. Just click on the link that says iTeam at the top of the page. You can learn more about Lutheran Services, the first shelter we told you about, and how you can help the kids that were affected by this policy.